Hi, I'm Mitch Burling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with David Fried of LAM Research. We're going to talk today about what comes after 5 nanometers, 3 nanometers, 2 nanometers. David, as we look out into the future, as these uh, devices get uh, smaller and smaller, their features get smaller and smaller, we're dealing with things like variability that we've been dealing with on previous nodes. How much worse does it get as we move forward? So as we make progression into the device technologies of the future, we're seeing several pretty impactful changes. Uh, we went from FinFETs at 22, 14, 10 nanometer uh, scaled FinFETs, and now we're starting to see the emergence of the nano wire or nano sheet devices. And so those introduce a whole different set of uh, variabilities and sensitivities in the transistors themselves. We're also seeing some pretty big changes in patterning. Um, EUV has gained uh, solid footing and solid adoption. It came in as expected. The, the first layers were holes and cuts, and then we're going to start it seeing its penetration into the critical line patterning layers often coupled with multi-patterning. But of course, the variation calculations of EUV with multi-patterning are quite different than they were with, you know, uh, 193 immersion and multi-patterning and different integration schemes. Does it require all new tools or just a recalibration of the tools that we have? Um, yes. <laughs> It'll require both. There's definitely some new tools and new processes out there that'll drive uniformity and fabrication performance, um, but a lot of tools and a lot of uh, technologies will, will want to be scaled from previous generations. So I think across the full process flow, that answer is going to be very different depending on the sector, the process, and, and individual implementations of given processes and structures. So what does a nanosheet look like? Okay, this is a, uh, a widely published image of a nano sheet device. Um, and what you see here is uh, we're starting to see a stack of three individual transistors per column. And those are obviously tied all together, the gates tied together through metallization and the source and the drain, which are into and out of the page here are also connected. But you're basically leveraging the advantage of gate all around technology. So the gate wraps entirely around that oval or oblong cross section of the transistor. You leverage the benefits of gate all around, but unlike a nanowire, it's a little wider, a little bit more robust, a little bit stabler, and it has a larger current carrying capability for, per transistor. So I think this is what nano sheets look like in, in research publications, and I think this is what we're going to start to see in some of the most advanced technologies moving forward. At this level of magnification, it's pretty easy to see variation between each one of these. How much does that variation impact performance, impact uh, yield, what sort of problems does that create? Yeah, it's a great question. And it's wonderful to get an image like this at TEM where you can see the really fine details of the technology. And anywhere you look, any process, any part of this structure, you can isolate differences one to another device here. These variations have multiple different effects. First and foremost, if these variations get too large, you can have failure of the devices, the technology, the processes. And that failure could be uh, yield limitations or it could be catastrophic damage in the, in the transistor and the fabrication flow. The other category uh, of impact is in device performance. If you look at each one of these nano sheets, you'll see they're a little bit different. And that little bit of difference will manifest itself in each of these transistors behaving slightly differently. Now, the chip designers, they start their design by assuming every transistor is identical, and then they test their designs by varying that assumption. And that testing and design modification process, those are the guard bands, the performance guard bands in chip design. So the larger the variation is, the more expected difference in the transistors, the larger those guard bands are in chip design. And those guard bands are really what impact overall product performance because every bit of guard band you include, you leaving maximum performance on the table. Uh, this is really what makes design technology co-optimization so important is you have to try to absolutely reduce any of these variations in performance so that the 
circuit designers don't have to guard band as much, but you still have to press as hard as possible for the ultimate in the dimensions and the fabrication flow for the highest performance you're able to achieve. Doing that in a predictive fashion and allowing the chip designers to understand that and to design in the presence of those variations is really essential to the most advanced products today. This has been a problem for the past few nodes, right? Is everybody's used to living on the margin that they had in the older designs. And it was a way of saying, okay, we know this chip will work. And if it doesn't work as expected, we still have some extra face here to play with, and it's not going to cause any problems. As you move down into first seven, five, and now three nanometers, that space you have to play with is much, much less. And on top of that, everything that you do in terms of using that space has an impact somewhere else because the tolerances are so tight. Yeah, absolutely. So as you scale down and down in dimensions, the processes need to improve to reduce the absolute variation of each individual process and dimension. But because the nominal transistor dimensions are shrinking even faster than that, the percentage of the normal dimensions that are taken up by variation is actually growing. And that's really the problem you're talking about is variation is becoming a larger section of the overall transistor device. And it's, it's leading to larger variations per unit device. And there's more devices and they're smaller. So we have less room to play with. But this is really the art and science of the technology where every generation we're working not only to improve the processes and the materials to reduce those variations, but also introducing device and integration schemes that reduce the sensitivity of those process variations to the final performance. And what's interesting here is when a designer develops a chip, they think that everything is going to be printed exactly the way that they've designed it. And what's showing up here is that even at the most advanced nodes with the most advanced technologies, that's not necessarily true. Yeah. When designers see TEMs, they're often pretty scared. There's always a lot of variation. The variation's been there for every generation. And, and the, the newest products in every technology generation have you know, large inherent variations like this. The, the challenge, as I said before, is that at these dimensions, the variations are starting to be on the same scale as the absolute uh, transistor dimensions. So yeah, it, it's been a problem for decades. It's just more exacerbated every generation as we get to smaller and smaller nominal dimensions. So if you have variation at three nanometers, is it ideal to put everything at three nanometers or is it better to say, hey, we can isolate this into a three nanometer logic chip, combine this with something else and, and put the pieces together and almost isolate the, the individual problems? Yeah, so for many generations, there's been a desire to use the most advanced device uh, the most performance centric device for the most performance sensitive aspects of the product design. And then all the other parts of the product, you want to use more robust, less variable, more bulletproof technology elements. Uh, for generations, those have been integrated monolithically on the same chip. Um, as we get to these very advanced devices, these nano sheets, these multi-stack devices, it's getting more and more difficult to co-integrate or monolithically integrate these long channel devices or thick oxide devices that are uh, more robust or more bulletproof for the non-performance sensitive parts of the product. So this is where we're starting to see heterogeneous integration concepts become um, more relevant so that you can use the nano sheet three nanometer technology for the most performance sensitive part of your, your chip or your product design, and then use older, more robust, more mature technologies, more bulletproof technologies for your IOs and interfaces and glue logic. Um, being able to integrate that in a chip package sense gives you the advantages of all those technologies, uh, but it becomes another complex chip integration task that needs to be managed by the chip design. Does that improve re overall reliability? So the lifetime of these chips that are uh, going into some of these uh, markets like automotive and uh, even into data centers is increasing. It used to be, uh, yeah, they were designed for seven years, but reality is they were used for a couple of years and, and pushed aside. Um, does this help or does it make it worse? Uh, it changes the trade-off for sure. And so it totally depends on the final um, product implementation. But the 
the reliability can be optimized in the different parts of the circuit design this way. But obviously, then you're taking on the inherent additional reliability risk of a chip package integration or packaging risk. And so um, there's a trade off. And if that trade off can be optimized such that you've uh, reduced your risk by using less of the most advanced technology, and you haven't increased your risk by that much because of the total integration, either monolithic or chip package, um, then, then you come out a winner. And this also plays into some of the um, intricacies in some of the markets as well, because instead of a one chip that's going to go out for a billion units now, now you have chips that may go out in lots of 100,000 or even a million versus a billion. So now you have to be able to adapt that and be able to play with that in, in ways you did in the past. Yeah, and, and there's another you know, another thread that's changing things, which is as we start optimizing different elements of the technology um, and really optimizing the product, there are a lot of people starting to question the overall product data flow and product architecture. We've been doing computing the same way for many generations. Uh, it's referred to as von Neumann computing. And so you're starting to see people look to re-optimize how we do computing uh, with elements like in-memory computing and things like that to change the overall product architecture here. Once you've, once you've split this up and you're trying to optimize and, and partition your technologies the right way, there's a lot of different options out there. We're seeing more options in the full product implementation that are coming around because of uh, chip design and product partitioning, but also the technologies themselves and the co-integration techniques that have come to the fore. So there's, there's innovation across the board, and it, as it comes together, it's opening up the landscape of the total products that can come out. David Freed, thanks for a great explanation. Thanks for having me, Ed. I enjoyed it.